Good morning, good morning, good morning. It is a beautiful, beautiful day. A fabulous, fantastic Friday. It's been a great day already. I met with Brother Harvey Baxter, and we had some fellowship and breakfast together, so it was just a great, great morning already. Hey, God doing great things. I'm working on a men's prayer breakfast, getting, trying to get things lined up, put together. Uh, more news to follow, uh, so just uh, stay tuned. I'll be right back. We're looking at When Jesus Speaks. Hallelujah. Good morning. It's a beautiful day. I look like might have had a little rain sometime during the night. A little damp when I got up walking around this morning, but it's a beautiful, beautiful morning. A little cloudy, but it's still a great day to be living for Jesus. God is just doing such marvelous things. And uh, like I said, I met with uh, Brother Harvey Baxter, Deputy Sheriff here at Massac County. Had him minister a couple Sundays while we were in our pastoral search. Did an awesome job in uh, working on a, a men's prayer breakfast for June, uh, probably the Saturday before Father's Day, which will be June the 18th. Not sure on a time yet. We'll work that out. But uh, guys, just uh, be ready. Uh, we're going to get together, keep Mountain Man breakfast, the French toast casserole, biscuits and gravy. So. Uh, we're going to have a great time, great time of fellowship. We'll have some more, read, get into the uh, devotion and just see what God wants to do. And, uh, you know, as I was preparing for this devotion, wasn't sure that what time I'd be done. And so God just worked it out because Brother Harvey ministers at the nursing home. So he had to be there at 10 o'clock. So it just worked out where you know, I was running a little later than normal getting here. But hey, it's all in God's timing, all in God's direction. And as I was studying and reading through some of this and, you know, thinking on when Jesus speaks, reminded me of that old commercial, you know, when E.F. Hutton speaks, people listen. Well, I can tell you, when Jesus speaks, we better listen. Uh, that's, a, that's a whole lot higher authority than E.F. Hutton. And so, you know, the words of Jesus have been spoken all over the world. They're typed in red in most of our Bibles, and they are our guidelines for living. The word of Christ is a message by which we are saved, and hearing it strengthens our faith. So then, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God, Romans 10, 17. As we read the words that Jesus spoke, our lives are transformed by the grace and truth which has made God known to us. Jesus Christ displayed power through words during his time on earth. He is interceding for us now, and we look forward to the day when he will command God's children to meet him in the air, and we will spend eternity with him. We have witnessed many articulate speakers that were able to sway crowds, but none were like Jesus. As Jesus walked the earth, his words had so much power that crowds followed him wherever he went. 
Large crowds listened to him with delight. And he spoke like none of the teachers of the law, but with such authority that the people were amazed. In fact, some of the chief priests and Pharisees demanded the soldiers arrest him, but they could not do it. They simply responded, no one has ever spoke like him. When Jesus spoke, the people listened. It is interesting to study the miracles that Jesus performed and note the similarities and differences between them. One similarity among most of them is the manner in which he operated. Jesus reordered nature, performed miracles, and raised the dead with his words. He rebuked the wind and water and calmed the sea. He instructed Simon to let down the nets to catch fish. Simon's reply, Master, we have toiled all night and caught nothing. Nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the net. When they pulled up their nets out of the water, they were caught so many fish, their nets began to break. They called their partners, and both boats were filled and began to sink. Although we know that power we know that his power came from the Holy Spirit and miracles were dependent upon the faith of the recipient. In most cases, Jesus simply spoke a word to heal and raise the dead. So was the case of the Roman centurion servant and the Syphonician daughter. Jesus was not even in the same town, yet he spoke a word. The servant was healed at that very hour and the demon left the daughter. Jesus has complete authority over demonic spirits. When he landed at Gadaria, he spoke to the evil spirits who had possessed the man. They're commanding the spirits to leave the man, permitting them to go into the swine. Immediately, the swine ran down the sea, and the man sitting clothed and in his right mind. Jesus raised the daughter of Jairus with the words, Talaf Kumai, which is translated, little girl. I say to you, arise. When teaching us to pray, Jesus instructed us to speak in our daily lives and in prayer. So I say to you, ask, shall be given to you. Seek, you will find. Knock, it will be opened to you, Luke eleven nine. 9. And when you say, Jesus made it clear that the words spoken have a great power. When we pray, we're to speak. And in that day you will ask me nothing, but most surely I say to you, whatever you ask, in, ask the Father in my name, he will give it to you. John 16, 23. Then again in verses 26 to 27, in that day you will ask in my name, and I do not say to you, I shall pray to the Father for you. For the Father himself loves you because you have loved me and believed I came forth from God. The same power which Jesus exercised during his time on earth was given to the disciples and passed down to those of us who believe. And these signs, and these signs will follow those who believe. In my name, you will cast out demons. They will speak in new tongues. They will take up serpents, and if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. Mark 16, 17, 18. By using Jesus' example and words, we know that in order to exercise this great power, which will act as witness, we must speak. We do all things by speaking the name of Jesus. Even today, Jesus is still speaking on our, be on our behalf. At this moment, he is at the right hand of the Father. He's interceding for us, Romans 8, 34. As we come to him, we can be completely confident that we are saved because the word says, therefore, he is able to save completely those who come to God through him because he all, always lives to intercede for them, Hebrews 7, 25. At this very moment, Jesus is speaking to our Father about us. When we hear his word and believe in God, we have eternal life, and we will not be condemned. Because we hear Christ's word, we have crossed from death to life, 
John 5, 24, because he is the word who was with God and is God. He has given us the right to become children of God. And we can only be children of God having peace with him because of the sacrifice and intercession made by Jesus. As children of God, we're looking forward to the day when Jesus will return to call us up to meet him in the air. For the Lord himself, whoo, for the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel and the trumpet call of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. And after that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up, carpesos, will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so will we be with the Lord forever, 1 Thessalonians 4, 16 and 17. When Jesus comes down from heaven, he will be coming with a loud command. His word will raise the dead and those who are alive will meet him in the air. We have such a wonderful hope because Jesus died for us, but because he rose again, <laughs> that we are called children of God and will spend eternity with Jesus. Do not be amazed at this, for a time is coming when all who are in their graves will hear his voice and come out. Those who have done good will rise to life, and those who have done evil will rise to be condemned. John 5, 28, 29. Therefore, encourage each other with these words. 1 Thessalonians 4, 18. These words bring hope, joy, and comfort to those who are in pain and remind us of our mission when we get tired. We are instructed to speak these words, reminding each other of the power of Jesus' word, the word that saved us, the word that healed the sick, the word that raised the dead, the word that intercedes with the Father on our behalf and will be spoken on that glorious day when he returns. We have confidence in our salvation because even now we know that Jesus is at the right hand of the Father He's making intercession. In prayer, we can speak directly to the Heavenly Father, praying in the name of Jesus, so that we have healing in our soul and our body. Finally, we have the power to perform miracles in the name of Jesus so that we can share the word. Share the word. Jesus is the word. Share the word with the world so that others might believe on him. The thief's purpose is to steal, kill, and destroy. My purpose is a rich and satisfying life, so said Jesus in John 10, 10. Jesus was clear as to his mission on earth, reaching back to a 400-year-old prophecy saying, the Lord anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom to the captives, a release from darkness for the prisoners, Isaiah 61.1. Oh, Jesus' declaration, John Eldridge writes, Christ could have chosen any one of a thousand other passages to explain his life purpose, but he did not. He chose this one. This is the heart of his mission. Everything else he says and does finds its place under this banner. I am here set you free when we speak the name of Jesus we're calling on the one who binds up the wounded restores the broken frees the human heart that is a captive to the sin Greg Fisher was a missionary to Africa for 25 years he points out it is the name of Jesus that carries real power to transform darkness power to heal broken bodies, restore crushed and mutilated souls. Ultimately, what we're announcing is the name of Jesus has power to save. Our world needs Jesus more than ever. We need Jesus more than ever. 
We need to speak Jesus over our fears and anxieties. We need to speak Jesus to those in our lives who are lost, to one another in the workplace. We need to speak Jesus to our families. What do you fear today? Don't panic. Your fear is simply a mirror that exposes sometimes a lack of faith. If you will fill your heart with faith, your fears will quickly be replaced with confidence and peace. I, I got to do that again. I gotta, if you fill your heart with faith, your fears will be quickly replaced with confidence and peace. But the only way to fill your heart with faith is to abide in God's Word. When you're afraid, it's because you're not abiding in his words and acting on them. Take his words into your heart today, and your fears will flee. Who needs you to speak the name of Jesus to them today? As I said earlier, it reminds me of the old commercial. When E.F. Hutton speaks, people listen. Well, I can tell you, when Jesus speaks... We've got to listen. And when we speak in the name of Jesus, God listens. God's there. He's helping us. He's leading us. He's guiding us. He's speaking in that still, small voice. We've got to understand and listen and know what voices we're listening to. Satan is a deceiver. He's an imitator. So it is so important to spend a quiet time and know what voices we're listening to. When Jesus speaks, we need to listen. God, I thank you and I praise you for this day. I thank you for this time, God. I just ask you now to help us. Help us to know your word. Help us to know your voice. And to know that when we speak in the name of Jesus, you do what seems to be impossible. God, I ask you to touch hearts and lives. There may be somebody that you bring across our path today that we need to speak the positivity of Jesus into their lives. Help us, Lord, to always be looking to you, the author and the finisher of our faith. Father, I'm so thankful for this time. I'm thankful for the wonderful things you're doing at Lighthouse. God, I give you all the praise and glory because the greater days are ahead than what is behind. The prayers of the righteous Woo, the prayers of the righteous. And I thank you and praise you for that. And we'll give you all the praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Hey, it's a great, great day. Great things are going on. Hey, we'll be online Sunday, both services, Sunday morning, 1030, Sunday night, 6 o'clock, communion Sunday. If you're at home watching online, have your cracker and juice ready because we will be partaking of communion Sunday morning. Uh, I will not be online Monday. Things going on, situations, it just things happen. So I'm so thankful for you joining with us today and you joining with us on these Mondays and Fridays and Wednesdays and Sundays. God is doing great things, and we're so thankful for that God's given us this ability that we can do these online. So you all have a wonderful, wonderful day. And no, the lights are still on at the lighthouse. You're going to make it with Jesus. Be blessed. You're a blessing and have a great weekend.